was called The Tsunami Future. Many of my friends are missing digits, but no one I know is missing a limb. That's the nature of fortune. It's incremental. One day you own a bay window in a house adjacent to Baxter Woods, and the next week you inherit a cottage overlooking Simeon Bay. One day your daughter marries a furrier, and the next day your wife moves to San Rafael. Fortune spaniels after you, and when it finally licks you on the heel, you find that it is made of tar. At long last, your dream has come true. Your future is watertight. The fraying seam of tomorrow has been sealed. Ah, but you miss the risk of rain. You long to get in on the hurricane. This poem has an echo of Wordsworth in the title and also uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. It's called The Tree is Farther to the Man. Uh, it's in four parts. The first part is the man speaking. Man, what a tree you are. Look at your girth, your spread, your leaves. Look at your talented branches, your perfect bark. Even your roots are not hidden from our view. Like May dolphins in the Indian Ocean, they peek playfully from the ground, signs of stolid accomplishment. Oh, what a marvelous tree you are. Amazing tree, outstanding tree. The tree. I don't think I can stand up straight one second more. My roots are exhausted. My bark feels dead. My branches have advanced in so many ill-considered directions, I'm lost in the map of their ancestry. I am constricted by rings. The weight of self crushes me. Woodpeckers, bloodworms, spider mites, and scullery bugs crave my pulp. I long to fall. Lightning. I will strike the tree and smash it. It will splinter under my sharp fist. It will topple. It shall not stand. All its branches will lie in horrifying squalor. History. I have photographed a tree in its infancy, maturity, old age, and decline. Now I will photograph the tree in its demise, upended in swart disarray. This one is called Bats in the Catacomb. It begins innocently in the third person and ends defeated in the first. The sun improbably begins to thunder. The hills impossibly begin to rain. Black dew appears on the lintels of the pauper's doors. Garter stakes form an alphabet decipherable only by birds. From the wind, we learn that there's a knotted form of everything. Across the world, nothing is aligned. Not suffering, not loneliness, not jobs. Dreams of being a millionaire are replaced by dreams of being a billionaire. That is to say, breakfast is no longer being served. Talk is so cheap, the primeval language of desire stays shapeless. Kids deformed with ribbons, rural Lotharios, 
tattooed grandmas, livestock lawyers, reverse cowboys, and young men carbuncular. Ladies and gentlemen, please sit away from the wire fence. We're otherwise not responsible for the mud. Trucks rut up mud, boys. Get used to it. <laughs> And this one uh, is called Fish Boy. I'm going to go into Door County. I'm going to have a pass of Fish Boy, yeah. Or something like it. It's a cheap way to feed 300 people. Hot fire, metal pot, peeled potatoes, raw fish. Control the temperature with a garden hose. Burn off the scum with kerosene. Use giant co aluminum colanders. Lift them out with iron rods. Set up a buffet table. Truck in some spicy coleslaw. Provide trays and salt and pepper. If you boil it, they will come. Those in shots, those in shorts and socks, those in sundresses, sans brasiers, those in cocktail gowns. The talk will be of bones and sunscreen and beer and bones. Careful of the bones. You have to protect the bones. Put sunscreen on your bones. Death has an appetite for bones. <laughs> And the last one I'm going to read is called Poem for Danny. Sometimes you're camping in Wisconsin, thinking about Melville and wondering what he'd make of Nat King Cole. And sometimes you're in Idaho on a job and you hear the pop of cooking soup, but there's nothing in the microwave. And sometimes you're in Lubbock in a hotel filled with polished apples and carts of recovered luggage. And sometimes you're in Boca Raton in the company of salesmen whose wives died of complications. And sometimes you're in Park City, harried as a lariat, lonely as a coty. And sometimes you're in Park Slope, staring from a convention window at girders so innocent they seem almost botanic. And sometimes, Floating in the Gulf of Mexico, you close your eyes and let the water cover them. And then, for a time which seems like mercy, you don't know where you are, or remember where you were, or imagine where you may go. Thank you.